video attempt for me. Alana Art Dream. Just call me Alana. I draw my chibi with some cute little cat plushies I've collected over the years. Well, ones that sort of look like this. <laughs> like I said, gonna give a like or to subscribe. I do this little drawings today. I got cute little cat plushies. I feel like I wanted to draw myself in my onesie. Because I recently... Oh god, this guy's bigger than my other plush. He's not that big, but I mean... Let's see how big he is. This one's my biggest. He's big boy. He's big boy. But I'm doing an attempt to try and... Whoop! Sorry, Murray. <laughs> my cat over there. <laughs> I wanted to try and draw some of these plushies with me wearing this onesie today. <laughs> but uh if you like as I said I don't can't tell you when which videos will stay up or not because sometimes uh, some of them are not so good and some of them are I am not sure if you'll like this one it's uh, my attempt to do with some drawing and maybe talk about cats while we're at it <laughs> but yeah I'm always trying to do a little chibi drawing so I uh, hope you have fun watching it and give a like and subscribe and click that bell if you want to make sure you watch any of my other videos I've put some of my TikToks up on here now because I realize not everyone can get TikTok so uh, if you want to check some of them out though I I will not guarantee I will respond especially if it's a negative thing because technically I don't need any more negativity in my life and I'm just doing this for fun so I mean if I could do this for a job I would but um I don't get paid enough to do this so negativity will be ignored but those guys have been supporting me and all that you're the greatest I'm sorry I keep putting this like and subscribe thing, but uh, life's getting expensive for everybody. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's I appreciate for those of you who are liking and subscribing and giving positive comments. You guys are great. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're going to get to the video. Right, so getting into the drawing. Um, sketching part, I didn't have as much trouble with this, but I had a, quite a bit of trouble doing the coloring and inking part for some reason. It just did not want to come out today. So we have sometimes drawing days like that. So I'm just trying out some things. Right. I like a lot of felines. And I have many reasons. One of them is, well, the thing with cats, I mean, wild cats too, I suppose too. I love them. I love lions, tigers, and leopards. Oh, I love leopards, they're awesome. But I would not go near a wild cat. Like a lipid or something. That's like asking for trouble. I love them, but they're dangerous, so wild cats leave those alone. But um, pet cats, like pet cats and cat plush and cat onesies and stuff like that, I love that kind of sort of thing. Especially the cuter it is, the more likely I'm going to end up taking it home with me. Ah, oh, problems. Uh, but anyway, um, reasons I'm very fond of cats actually is they're actually so misunderstood. Especially when it comes to people who've never owned a cat or people who've had encounters with cats. They don't understand what cats are really like. It's kind of similar to um, with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and a lot with the queer community. Like that is so misunderstood on so many levels. Like the cat's misunderstood, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is mis misunderstood and well, I think autism is misunderstood too, but I don't know much about autism, but... So hence, cats are kind of like related to these things to me in my option. Cats are as misunderstood as the queer community and... People with attention hyperactivity disorder, so I can sort of relate and... Funny enough, people with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder like myself are kind of a lot like cats, misunderstood and poorly represented because people just sort of don't realize that each cat has its own personality you have like different personalities different behaviors there are actually a lot of things that they're now just starting to understand it's kind of similar with the lgbtq community the queer community it needs to be talked about more not hidden under the rug like with cats too many people just assume something about them like they're not loyal they can be very loyal in their own ways just sometimes they don't like loud noises so if you're a person who's loud all the time 
you're more likely not going to have the cat wanting to hide away from him because it wants peace and quiet. But there are some cats who don't mind loud. It depends on the cat. Like there are super friendly cats out there. It also depends on on how you treat it, how you take care of it. There is, you can train them. It just means you have to have a lot more patience. And you have to be better at figuring out how their motivations, like each cat is different. Like, and when cats get older, there's like all sorts of things. Cats are interesting creatures actually. <laughs> and like people from, you know, it's like a lot of things they should really do better information out there because there is so much bad information about cats out there. As I said, same with attention deficit disorder. It is so like, like, um, so many people seem to think it's, it doesn't exist or it's like, they think it's something you only have as a kid when it's not really like the case people. So it's part of the reason I think I relate to cats a lot because Cats are actually very loving, sweet creatures, you know, and they're very misunderstood and they haven't been treated well either. There's some people, sadly enough, there have been still people who go around doing horrible things to cats and mistreating them like, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Like, we have to really learn to be better with how we treat each other and the animals around us and the plants around us and stuff. We really got to all start to learn to start treating each other and can't really just take everything at face value anymore. We really have to look deeper under the surface because technically too many people do that. It's, it's, it's sad. And but I'm like, as I said, with cats, I love them for so many reasons. Like they can be quite loyal. Actually, my cat Merlin, I have, have you seen him? Um, he, um, especially during winter, but sometimes during the summer too now, he, he, he sort of, you know, especially as they get older, some cats get very clingy, and my cat Murray is definitely one of them. He will complain if mom and I don't sit on the sofa with him, or he doesn't know where we are. He will complain. Like, he knows we'll go out during the day, but he, as long as we come home again, and not just to feed him, he loves to talk, though. I think he just likes to have us around so he can just yell at us all the time. It's so funny. Or he'll get upset if we're not there to sit with him on the couch. And he'll pop up and say hi when I come home. And then he'll get upset when I go to bed if I don't take him with me because if he doesn't know where either of us are. So it's quite funny. It's like people who misjudge and say, oh, cats don't care about their people around them. That's That's not true. There have been even scientific researches done where cats actually worry, where their owners went to another room and the cat actually worried where the owner was. So cats do actually concern. It's just they're a bit more quiet about it and have their own, they even play with you as well. It's just a different way of doing it. It's because, I mean, I have nothing against dogs. I was, I even had a whole thing about being interested and collecting dog toys as a kid and stuff like that. But um, that's another, for another discussion. But um, dogs are so overly glorified to some people. I mean, not, isn't the, like in some ways, like some people will excuse them, like find all sorts of excuses for bad behavior. But I mean, look, I mean, sometimes the dog's not trained well, you should do some training, but they do require a lot more work than cats, I suppose. But cats do require some work too on taking care of them. But um, cats are a bit better for a person who has to go out to work during the day and then comes home at night because the cat will remind you to feed it. It will always be there to cuddle up with you if you're a working person, you do have to sort of, you can train your cat, but it will take a lot more patience. But um, cats definitely are a very bet better pet to have if you're, a, everyone in the family is working because at least, you know, different times of the day, at least the cat will know as long as you come home and you say hi to it and you feed it and you brush it, you have to brush your cat. It is important you give them a brush every once in a while because especially in between seasons, or your cat's very fluffy, then you definitely have to brush them to keep them from getting mats. But um, they will appreciate it, but you have to make sure you teach them to like brushing from early on because then um, you will have trouble when you have to start doing it a bit more often. Because like baths too, you have to get them used to it. But cats are a lot more loyal, but and they're very misunderstood in my options. It's part of the reason why I like them. <laughs> so we're talking, having cats is actually a pretty good 
pet to have in my option, but I mean, there are other pets that are misunderstood, like these people have snakes, but I'm not really for snakes. snakes. Snakes are not my thing, but I know there's some people who really love having snakes. And it's not fair when some people are mean to these pet owners for snakes and they just write it off as like saying they are not, it's not, not right. But I mean, as I said, I'm more of a cat person. So snake would definitely not be my <laughs> thing to have. And there's people who have birds as pets and they, they can be quite loyal as well. So pets that are misunderstood. But as I said, cats are definitely getting the rough end of the stick. Like when the Europeans first took them from Egypt, they started labeling them as witches pets and stuff, which is not nice. There is actually a book somewhere I have uh, called The Last Black Cat. I would recommend reading that because it definitely sort of rides into more, um, I have a few cat books. If you ever guys want me to recommend some of them, I have a few. But I mean, if you ever get around The Last Black Cat is a good book to read. Then there's um, Cat Metropolis. There's some really good cat stories. Those are two of my favorite cat books. <laughs> But um, yes, and there are some cats in real life who actually will go and save their owners. Like there's this one who saved um, her child owner from getting attacked from a dog that just got let out. Who let that dog out? I do not know, but from a dog attack because kid would have been in far worse things. Like the mother was shocked, didn't even know the dog was coming. And then quickly the cat came in and whoop, saved the kid. And the mom quickly tried to get everyone inside, the kid included, and get the cat. But yeah, cats are definitely a lot more than people give them credit for. I'm like rambling on, but as I said, it's the same with attention deficit disorder or the queer community. A lot of, there's a lot more information to things and it's not, you can't just have it all written off. You really got to do some, more research and stuff into these things. Like when you get a cat, cat for a pet, you should do some research. But that's like every time you get any kind of pet, you should do some research before you get them to make sure you have all the things you need to take care of them. They will need things to enrich them. They will need to be played with. But as, as a person, like both me and my mom go out to work out during the day. So then we come home and, you know, Murray worries about us, but you know, it is, a cat won't yowl throughout the day because it knows you need to come and go because sometimes cats need to come and go as well. But um, they doesn't mean they don't miss you and it doesn't mean they, they won't worry about you. It's like, so yes, in my option, I think one of the reasons I really like cats is they're very misunderstood. Like, as I said, with attention deficit disorder, people sort of assume that, um, some people with attention hyperactivity disorder are narcissists, but it's not really the case. It's just how we feel for things sometimes isn't working the same way as what other people, same with cats. They do feel, they do get low, they do care about their owners. It's just not the same way as a dog will, because a cat will know you will come back. It, it trusts you to come back. It's just, it knows, because it, like, it, like you will trust the cat to come back. It will come and go, and it knows as long as you're still there in the same spot. But yes, as I said, cats are actually quite loyal animals. They don't go choosing every single person. They will stick to the person that they, cats choose people. I don't know about dogs. Dogs will probably choose someone who feeds them and plays with them more often than not. But um, cats? Cats will stick to the person who treats them well. And they they are more likely to, they'll know, like I know Murray gets mad at me sometimes when I have to give him his flea treatment stuff every month because to make sure he doesn't fleas and ticks and all sorts of things. He'll, he'll have a bit of annoyance, but then he'll come back because I think he understands I'm trying to just do the best for him. Uh, but having cats is quite interesting. It's never boring when you have one because then you have to find new ways to play with them because it's not always the same way. <laughs> And my cat Murray doesn't always want the same food. He's like, I don't like people really. Cats are more like people than people give them credit for. It's sort of, they definitely teach you to, <laughs> how to be a bit better, I suppose, in their care. And <laughs> they can be quite ridiculous sometimes with some of the stuff they do. It's like, you will never be bored with a cat. That's for sure. And Sometimes they just want to hang out in the same room. If they don't hang on on you, they sometimes just want to hang out in the room where their favorite people are. Like with my cat Marie right now, he's sleeping on my bed. I think I've, I have the heater on. For, I'll put the little heater on for him. Because especially when he gets older, when your cats get older, they start wanting to seek out heat. 
a little bit more because they get older it's not easy for them but they will definitely want cuddles from you because they will seek you out for affection sometimes but it's on their terms because like people sometimes a person needs their alone time cats understand this so they know boundaries to some degree <laughs> but um they will follow you around they are very loyal to certain people. They don't choose to be loyal to everyone. There are some cats that who like to get affection from everyone. Like my sister... Hmm... How do I put this? My sister's... My sister Jen had a cat who was very, very on the friendly side. There are some very friendly cats, depending. Like some cats who love affection because they were definitely treated the best as kittens, I think. But I mean, there are some cats who are rather on the shy side and they may be only friendly to certain people. So you have to be like people. There are people who are really shy. But as I said, with attention deficit disorder and cats, they're sort of similar behaviors, but they will come to you on their own terms, sort of. And they, you just won't know it when it happens because it's different. Like each person with attention deficit or a different personality, each cat is too. So, hence part of the reason I'm such a fan of them is like, both get misunderstood big time. And funny enough, I think cats sort of understand attention, can hang around with a person with attention deficit just a little bit better than uh, some people. But uh, they are interesting nonetheless. I know I've been, I've met quite a few different kinds of cats in my lifetime. Uh, like especially um, I find a lot of artists sometimes find inspiration with cats because it's fun to try and draw them. It's fun to create things actually based around them. And a fun friend of mine once told me, uh, we both love dragons sometimes. I'm not that good at drawing them yet. One day I'll get a bit better. I mean, different ways of that. Said some, some artists when they try to draw um, Imagine dragons, they uh, use cats as a reference for the body type or sometimes behaviors because sometimes dragons, I'm not sure if you ever noticed with some of the artwork and stuff or storylines, they are like based around felines. <laughs> it's quite interesting, not just lizards, they have like. That's it. <laughs> oh. So, yes, I'm like constantly yabbling on here in the, and while drawing in the background, as you can see. Like some coloring came in alright, but um, when I came to a certain color, I had to get my white pen out and fix it a bit in places because a, a few instances, uh, like I was, there were times like I wanted to give up on this drawing. As you can see in the thing at the moment, it's gone well. The sketch part was fine, but when I started doing some coloring in and inking, that's when I started having trouble. And I was like, no, I might have to start over and I don't want to start over. Uh, but maybe when it's drying, and I'll post it up on my Instagram, so you guys please check that out as well. I do have an Instagram, same name, Alana Art Dream. <laughs> but yeah, going on and on and on about kitty cats. Uh, I hope this stays in good thing, but I'm like very happy you guys have been checking out some of my um, TikToks at the moment. I've been having fun with those, though. Um, some comments don't make sense with my when I see them. Not sure if I want to respond to some, but uh, but I do like the ones that were really nicer. But I mean, I do try to respond, and my Instagram. But uh, other things that are going on at the moment, scamming. I am so sick and tired of scammers, man. They've been calling me constantly. Ugh, there's been a lot of scam calls. So be careful with anything that's asking, even from your friends. Make sure you can actually see the proper, it's like a proper, proper link. Because if it's like that with just text link, half the time it's a trick. I would not click on that if I were you. Ugh. There have been a lot, like some of them intending to be the post office, some of them intending to be your bank. Do not click on the links from them unless you know 100% that it's genuine. Uh, I think my poor mother um, was trying to call text support and uh, got, got scammed by um, some tend to be text support when she was trying to get something fixed. So yeah, they've been trying, so she might have to cancel one of her cards, her card at the moment, because they've been taking money out and she cannot afford for them to keep doing that. So, yep, not good. A friend of mine also had their Instagram hacked and she was doing her business from there and um, now she's lost her Instagram because of some link was sent to her and they've taken over her account. So please be careful with what links you click on, guys. They are getting people through that, or they're telling you through phone calls. 
give you the robot voice or pretend to be like something, double check everything before you click on anything. Make sure you are not clicking on a scam thing. Ugh, even text messages, especially a lot of them. Ever since the pandemic, I think a lot of people have been trying to do more scamming now. They get business, which is really a dishonest way. But um, as I said, half of the time I'm getting these texts on my phone. When I'm at work of all places, we're asking me to click on links, so I have to delete every time. I'm, I know when I'm at work, nobody calls me usually. They usually leave me alone, so hence the reason I know for a fact. People don't call me at the certain hours that a scammer is calling me, so just be careful, guys. <laughs> and we were back to talking about cats. As I'm drawing, I managed to fix that little mistake that happened in one eye, but anyway. <laughs> You can see I'm still drawing me in my onesie. I did a little onesie dance. Oh, this onesie of mine that I have that I'm drawing and drawing the thing. A sister of mine got it from Japan. It's a very good one. I think this one's washable. I have to go see, get this one washed. I think it's this one you can wash. Some onesies you cannot wash too well. So that's a problem. So you have to make sure when you get a onesie that you can get one that you can get in the washing machine and get a different, decent wash. <clears throat> Sorry, talking too long. I think I'm making myself go hoarse. Ah. So drawing here is, yep, going in with some gray, which makes for a good black. If you don't want to lose your lines, I would recommend going for a different shade of gray and then sort of using that. Had a lot of fun drawing this. Whew. Taking a while to record all of this. So as you can see, going over with some uh, gray tunes. <laughs> Having fun with this drawing. Though, I, as I said before, while I was drawing this, some of this, there was lots of mistakes to be had and there was times I wanted to give up on it and start over and start a new drawing. But um, so far I managed to hold on because People don't always mention the, how hard it can be to do a drawing, especially with coloring and then the inking part can be the dreadful. The sketching part's more fun. And there were some really tiny details I tried to get in when I started inking, but uh, trouble. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, with cats, definitely misunderstood. I've been also keep myself busy. I don't quite understand the um hate cats get though i mean it's seriously some of it is really like especially for some shows and stuff if they still using the cat as a bad guy trope i think it is so outdated and overused like cats aren't as bad as people give them credit for it like they can be just misunderstood i mean there are some cats who are probably jerks <laughs> but there's some really nice cats out there too and they're pretty, quite sweetie because if you treat the cat well, if you don't hurt them, they'll treat you real well. <laughs> uh, so hence, this is definitely a cat dedicated drawing video. <laughs> uh, my cat is sleeping on the bed as we speak. But yes, as I said, he he's very loyal to me. He gets very upset and he'll always constantly want to sleep with me in the bed. Doesn't matter what time of the year. He concerning for where his people are. <laughs> it's quite funny, Mum and I can't help but find it adorable because he actually does go looking for us. <laughs> or sometimes he just wants to talk to us and it makes no sense how much he just wants to talk. <laughs> like, it's quite funny though. Or sometimes he doesn't know what he wants. It's just hilarious. He's like, <laughs> I don't know what I want. I'm like, Murray, not this again. Oh, uh, he's so funny. But yes, as I said, cats are very much the misunderstood creatures and I'm kind of over the whole stereotyping of making cats out to be bad guys when really no not really like they're not really that bad like it's overused trope like especially in western media they um like to make the cat the bad guy when it's not always the case anyone who's ever had a pet cat will tell you otherwise cats aren't that bad they're fun pet to have, really. But I mean, but then again, it's like the dog has been hyperfixed so much to be the best friend, but then when they when things go wrong, they're like, they act so shocked. Like, I mean, a dog is still an animal. 
there are still some things you should not trust the dog with, like with little kids, because kids will do some things. We'll not always be gentle. A cat will at least give you a warning. I mean, there are some times you shouldn't leave the cat with the baby either, like with animals, because little kids and babies will yank on things, and there are some cats and dogs out there who will not tolerate it. So really, you know, when you have, have the kid there with the pets, make sure you're watching them especially when they're really little because some kids don't understand the whole concept um you hurt the animal it will give you it, it will retaliate so it makes sense to maybe pay more attention to what the kids doing if you're gonna have kids teach them to treat animals right teach them to treat animals not only animals but plants too because kind of like having a cat is like having a teenager very misunderstood too. Some teenagers are not understood well by their parents. Like you have like a little kid and teenagers, the cats are definitely uh, more independent creatures, but it doesn't mean they don't want your attentions and they don't want your love. They just want it on their terms. And they will not go just go to any person. They will choose their people. Like some people when they get cats, they just got a cat out of nowhere because the cat's like, Oh, I like this person. I did this person. I will now have this person feed me and take care of me and I will give them all my love. <laughs> I will be this person's person who I will sit on their lap and cuddle with. This will be my person. I choose them. I will follow this person. I will yell at them and ask them and I will do all my little cat meows at them. Because they... I find also when I'm ever on my period, Murray is definitely the most attentive because he knows I'm in the most pain on those days. And he will just sit with me and purr his head off sometimes and be just a cuddle source. He can sort of know, the cat sort of knows. He will sit there. Or when I'm having a lame day or, you know, just sit there. He let me pet him. He'll be a distraction sometimes. The cat will try to distract you. But yeah, as I said, cats are definitely an interesting pet to have. <laughs> and here we are still with the coloring in. I did not realize going over this again how long it was taking me. <laughs> ah, so some people said you like listening to me ramble on. I'm glad for that. <laughs> but as, as I said, um, cats are kind of misunderstood creatures big time. Like in Egypt, they, they worship the cat because of certain things. But outside of that, it was especially in Western media, like, oh my god. It's like... Even with women today are still misunderstood. Like, holy shit, there's information now that you go looking up about cats and stuff like that. And even how to better, like, they're still getting it wrong. Like, <laughs> even so, it's like, people really need to do better research on, their, on, on things, you know? Even I, I know I will get probably information wrong and I constantly have to double check my facts, but, Hmm. As I can say one thing, there's a lot of things that are getting the misinformation, misunderstood things going out there and really needs to be double checked, like stuff going on in America, oh my god. I know Australia has its issues and lots of countries have their issues, but oh my god, some Americans really need to double check what their government is doing because my goodness, there's a lot of shit going on wrong over there. Like, especially they seem, a lot of their politicians don't seem to understand what some things like how the bodies, the w women's bodies work. They have no idea how that works. They have no idea that some things are just too young and I think they want more kids over there so they're trying all sorts of things, which is stupid. I'm pro-choice, so by the way. I mean, life is important and stuff, but not at the expense of someone else dying because there are still people who are dying from birth and it's, it's just... Like, lots of things can go wrong in a pregnancy still because the only thing they focus on is the fetus, but not, not the person. And I know... Like, I mean, there's certain situations that you have to be really delicate with, but there are some things... Yeah. <laughs> so, still going? As I said, uh, like reasons I said before, I think I've said it a million times, I think cats have been very misunderstood. Like, there are still people who, um, treat black cats 
pretty badly. It's not good, especially during Halloween. Keep your black cats safe. But, um, and then, like, and then you got your orange tabby cats. They're pretty friendly. They're a type of cat. But, uh, they're misunderstood. Under like, sometimes. And then you got your calico. As a friend of mine has a calico. It's uh, named Dusty. She's super cute. Cutest meow I've ever heard a cat have. But each, each cat has their own meows, their own personalities, and stuff like that. Like people with attention deficit disorder. Misunderstood big time. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It's, it's, you need to do more research on these things, especially on cats. They're actually a lot sweeter than people give them credit for. Unless you actually have met a few cats in your life, and I've met quite a few. I think you won't really understand a cat until you actually have one in your life because just meeting one and owning one are two very different things like I've owned quite a few different cats in my life and I get along with them like heck when I was an infant I think when I was an infant infant my parents lived in Fiji for a little while with me and they only stopped when my sister Zoe came into the world because then they said oh no we have to start sending them to school soon and stuff like that it wasn't until way later on that they split when I was in my late teens, so <laughs> that was a miss. But um, but uh, we're not gonna get into that. But as I said, with cats, part of the reasons I love them is they're kind of misunderstood big time. Like you don't realize how loyal they are. I'm like, my cat Murray, he's, he actually comforts me. Like, I, I would have had probably a lot more nightmares if I didn't have him hanging around because he actually helps him ground what reality and isn't there because technically, like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the same with other people with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but sometimes my nightmares can get pretty whacked. It's part of the reason I try to avoid horror films or slasher films or anything. Though I did like um, watching Bones. And I did watch a few um, M MCIS shows from a while back. I'm not that into them, but uh, sometimes Law and Order at one point was something I watched too. But uh, sometimes my dreams can get quite a whacked. I have a dream catcher that sort of having that around makes me feel a bit comfortable. I think it's an authentic one. But um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen any of my videos, but there is a dream catcher in my room for that particular reason, because my dreams can get pretty weird. I haven't had any bad dreams since I've had it, but uh, sometimes if I still have one, and I still do sometimes, especially if I've watched anything really creepy or um, really traumatic, um, waking up and having worry and just calmly sleeping shows that it's, oh, it's fine, because cats will react to things. They will react, like they'll try to run away and hide. Or they'll, they'll hiss at something if they don't know what it is. But having the cat just see, sleeping there, relaxed, is sh usually showing me, oh, it's fine. Because, like dogs, dogs, well, not all dogs, I've been told, will respond to a person coming into the house. If your cat's trying to hide, then it makes you wonder if something's going on, or if your cat's making noises. Like, for instance, they will watch the door. Like my cat Murray, sometimes we like to f um, give out bread crusts or parts of the bread we're not fond of, we throw out to the garden. And the birds sometimes come for it. I sometimes even throw out fruit craw like cores of my apples when I have some, and I throw that into the backyard. And uh, my cat Murray likes to watch the birdies through the door, and he will make little noises about it. So cats are actually very observant to their surroundings. His cat TV, have him watching the birdies outside. It's kind of funny. We get a lot of birdies in this new neighborhood we've moved in. It's kind of fun. We had a bird nest once, but uh, I think the baby bird fell out and Murray got the bird. And I was like, no, Murray! Mom was like, no, drop the bird, don't you dare. Mom is a big fan of birds. <laughs> I mean, that is the thing with cats. They will go catching birds if you let them go outside. I try not to let them out during when the birds are out, so the birdies have their time and Murray has his. So when the birdies aren't around, then he's allowed to go out into the garden. And I observe him, make sure he doesn't go after things, but he will still chase bugs and stuff. He's a bit of a hunter. I even gave him a bell to try and uh, deter the birdies. Plus he is getting older now, so the birdies can't, he can't get them very much, but you know, always got to keep an eye on that. And I always gotta make sure I pay attention to what he's eating. My goodness, your cat, if you're not paying attention to what he's eating, will eat things he's not supposed to. My goodness, my child. 
Ugh. It's like, nope, Murray, what are you eating? Put that down. Uh, though usually he's pretty good. He's pretty fussy about his food, too. To a degree. He likes the good stuff. <laughs> and I have to pay attention to what cat foods I'm giving him, too, because some cat foods are not good for cat stomachs. You have to make sure you're getting something that's good for them because some will make your cat sick. So you have to pay attention to what you're feeding your cat and what plants you have around because your cat will try to chew on things because, as I said, it's like having sometimes a very quiet kid instead of a noisy one. But cats don't like loud noises, so if they hear a loud noise, they will let you know if someone's coming and is intruding. They will react. It's quite funny. Sometimes they'll just keep sleeping, other times if it's like quiet enough. But sometimes a cat will actually respond to something if they think there's a danger and stuff like that. Because they'll like... There's sometimes I'm worried I'd have ghosts in the house. The cat will look around. Though Nick, technically he doesn't do it. This house he doesn't seem to sense any ghosts around here. But I know our house beforehand would have been considered haunted a bit. Like, hmm... So at night, having him around was definitely making me feel a little less freaked out. He sort of definitely is a comfort having him around. Like, when we were moving, I I swear, he... I was worried he would not be able to settle in when we had to stay at my sister's for a little while. While we were in between moving stuff from one place to the other. And moving into the new house because we had to clean the floors a bit. Because the last owners left quite, um... I still have marks in the carpet, I think, from the last owners. I think they had kids, so I've like I've tried to put rugs over in places. Well, it looks like I'm near the end of my drawing, so thank you for watching. <laughs> I think it came out alright, though I had a few times I wanted to give up on this, but the drawing came out well. And please be nice to the cats. <laughs> but this drawing came out quite well. It to the end of the video. Woo, you made it here. So you get one somewhat annoyed cat. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching again. And uh, if you want to check out other videos, please be my guest. Give them some likes and subscribes too, or some friendly comments. <laughs> no, we're going to catch it to you. But anyway, thank you for watching. Much appreciated. <laughs>